that? What are we working on today? Ah, good morning, Chris. We're going to measure an asphalt binder viscosity using a rotational viscometer. A rotational what? Viscometer. So it's going to measure the ability of an asphalt binder to flow at elevated temperatures. Like pumping the binder? Exactly, but also for mixing and compaction. Viscosity is also one of the parameters that we use when we're grading asphalt binders. Like A minus or B plus? No, well, performance grading, right? So PG, most of the US uses PG 64 minus 22 as their asphalt binder grade. So it's really a pretty simple test. We're going to take this spindle here, it's gonna rotate in an asphalt sample, and it's gonna measure the torque it takes. The higher the torque, the stiffer the binder. So let's get spinning. All right, let's get to it. Right, so the PPE that's required today is going to be a lab coat, safety glasses, and heat resistant gloves. I got them right here. Excellent. So the specifications that we use to measure asphalt viscosity is going to be either be the Ashto T316 or the ASTM D4402. They're very similar. Have you read them? Yeah, I have them and I printed them out too. Excellent. So the equipment that we're going to use is the rotational viscometer itself. We call this the head unit typically. It has an environmental chamber and a temperature controller. We also need the sample chambers, which often have their own rack, and these specialized pliers to move them back and forth. And we also have the spindle itself that lowers down in the chamber. So the spindle spins in the chamber to measure the viscosity? Exactly. So next, we're going to go to the oven and get the asphalt binder out that's been preheated to 135 degrees Celsius, plus or minus one degree. And we're gonna pour it into our asphalt sample chambers here. How much does each chamber hold? The specification didn't exactly say. So if we're using the number 21 spindle like we are today, it's going to be eight grams, plus or minus a tenth. But if we're using the number 27 spindle, which is used for stiffer binders, typically that will grade out to a PG76 or higher, then you need to check with the manufacturer's recommendation. But typically it's 10.5 grams. Oh, that makes sense. So we need to be very careful when we're pouring the asphalt binder into the sample containers because we don't want to get any of the asphalt binder on the sides or on the top. We need it to all be in the chamber. So it takes a steady hand. It does. So next we're going to go ahead and insert one of the sample chambers into the environmental chamber. There you go. Fits like a glove. And it's more like a key. It actually locks into position so that we know the binder is in the very correct location. Now we're going to attach the spindle. And we can lower the spindle into position. As we lower it in, we need to be very careful that we don't bend the extension wire here. If that wire gets bent, then we'll need to get a new one. It's important that we keep the spindle in the center of the sample as it does its rotation. So how fast does it spin? It's a good question, but before we worry about that, we need to make sure that we check the percentage of torque on the head itself, because we don't want to overstress the motor. If we get that, that percentage of torque up around 98%, mm -hmm. it may just say torque air, but it could also damage the equipment. So we need to make sure that binder is hot enough that it's going to spin okay there. So it says 20 RPMs, is that right? 20 RPMs is exactly right, but it's a good thing we checked because it can be adjusted on here and 20 RPMs is what we need for our measurements today. Next thing we need to do is verify our temperature. It says 135.1, so that's good. Yep. All right, now we can switch it on. You want to go ahead and push start? I've got a timer right here for 10 minutes. So with the Ashto standard, we're going to let that rotate for 10 minutes and then we'll take our first reading. But if we're using the ASTM specification, we need to go an additional five minutes at that point. All right, time's up. All right, so now it's time to read the viscosity. It says 505, but what is that? It's in centipoise. But what we're actually going to record is in Pascal seconds. So we're going to divide the centipoise by 1,000. So we're going to go ahead and write down 0 0.505. Next, we need to check and make sure what the torque was. It's in the range of 10 to 98 percent. What? What? I read the standards. Oh, excellent, excellent. So we also got the temperature, we got the spindle size. Now that we've read this once, the standard says that we need to take an average of three different readings. So those need to be taken one minute apart. Good deal. So to recap, I'm going to measure the viscosity of an asphalt binder using this rotational viscometer. I'm going to pour the hot binder into the sample chambers, put the sample chambers into the environmental chamber, 
Lower the spindle into the environmental chamber, press start, and after 10 minutes, I'm going to record the reading from center poise and convert it past cal seconds. Sounds to me like you've got it. So we've got 25 more binders that need tested. Let's get after it. Ah. <sighs>